Welcome to Fast Effect Double Speed Magic the Gathering. Here we have Ben on Death and Taxes leading out with a Plains against Matt on Eureka Tell. And we've got that trademark Thalia on the second turn. Does Matt have the Force? Looks like he does. So Thalia denied. And she is so important in this matchup, shutting off the primary win condition of using Cunning Wish and Omniscience to close the game out. Now we've got Matt impulsing to try and stop this second Thalia. However, Wasteland standing on alert, perhaps. Nope. All right, so no, no other counter. So now Matt is seeing himself underneath a Thalia and now bleeding out life as Ancient Tomb is being used to support his cantrip. He does keep and use the floating mana for a Lotus Petal. Now the reason why Thalia is so important in this matchup is Death and Taxes has a incredible amount of access to creature removal in the form of Caracas and Swords to Plowshares, so it can be very difficult to win uh, with a Gristlebrand, for example. Emrakul gets a little bit easier, can't be Swords, but Caracas does handily answer him as well, and there it is. This match really taking a turn for the worse for Matt as he's facing down not only Spirit of the Labyrinth, but now Caracas. More planes added down to just five. It's now or never for Matt. Now he does have enough mana to potentially show and tell in something. So this is not over till it's over. You want to show and tell in an omniscience and cast an emrakul is really where you want to be. Once you're casting emrakul, then, of course, it doesn't care about Thalia. It's not a non-creature spell. And also returning emrakul to your hand, not actually a big deal, as you're just going to be able to cast him and get the extra turn again. Here's the show and tell. We've got a recruiter of the guard and an omniscience. Grabbing another Spirit of the Labyrinth. And Matt's got a Gristlebrand. And that, uh, that alone will not do. And he's got to pass the turn. It looks like, yeah, Ben drawing a card. Gristlebrand gets bounced. And everything turns sideways as Death and Taxes takes that one down. Now, Emrakul there actually would have won that game potentially as it would have allowed for an Annihilator 6 and Matt could have potentially found something else to get in the way of the remaining Spirit of the Labyrinth. Though, man, I guess Emrakul might not have been enough. It'd be real close. So I believe he had six permanents prior to the show and tell. So once another creature comes in, you can leave a Spirit of the Labyrinth. Matt being at three means Death and Taxes can crack back for lethal. So yeah, Matt would actually have needed something else. Now, Thalia getting cleared off the board does make that Omniscience uh, incredibly strong as every spell that you're casting is just zero mana at that point. So Cantrips can find more Cantrips until you eventually find a Cunning Wish or, say, a Gristlebrand, which would potentially stabilize there. But Ben picking that first one up, and I actually think this is one of the more important matchups in Legacy. For, for my dollar, I think... Eureka Tell is the strongest show and tell build uh, that we have available to us. I think it's one of the better decks in the format. And uh, I think matchups like this, Rug Delver, uh, there are certain matchups that I think are really important to get the reps in and to get a good understanding about what's important, what the best range of keepable hands truly is, as your your starting hands become incredibly important. Basic lands so key in this matchup. As Wasteland can be just backbreaking when combined with Thalia and Rashad and Ports. I guess basic lands are important, but fetch lands are also really important, is another way to think about it. Is when you have a fetch land out, they 
Death and Taxes player largely going to be unable to interact with that, either a Wasteland or a Rashad in port. Neither of them really uh, are able to knock you back a mana at that point, as you can fetch in response if need be, or you can, of course, I mean, I mean if they're trying to tap it or Wasteland it, you can just fetch in response. So fetch lands are very, very vital to withstanding the attack on your mana base. And of course, having access to those basic lands. Now, I don't personally like a forest in any of the Eureka Tail builds, and I don't believe Matt is currently on one either. Kind of the worst thing that can happen in this deck is your opponent knocks you off of blue mana, and a forest kind of does that for you. I mean, Ancient Tomb and City of Traders are incredibly strong, but you're not playing a playset of each specifically because of the potential lack of blue mana. And Matt, with a Tropical Island, leads out with a Ponder. And to use a tennis analogy here, who goes first is very important in this matchup, so you kind of expect, barring exceptional draws or exceptional play, very often this matchup will come down to somebody holding serve, so to speak, where Matt is likely to win when he is on the play, and Ben's going to be likely to win when he is on the play. Uh, but here, things looking pretty bad as a Lotus Petal used for a Brainstorm. So if Matt does not find a fetch land there, this game... Oh, wow, he's got the show and tell. So we got a Gristlebrand versus a Thalia. Will Ben have a Caracas and just utterly ruin Matt's dreams? No. We've got Gristlebrand sending. And now it's going to be time to draw some cards. So he loses seven, gains the seven back. And he's going to look to further extend his lead on board. The fact that Ben did not have a Caracas to play, incredibly promising for Matt. I don't really recognize this... Uh, I mean, it's just a complete altar. We can see the white mana symbol in the middle of that plains. Matt building his mana base here. I didn't catch if he was floating mana, but I'd presume so. No, it looks like he's actually just going to discard. So trading in that City of Traders for a Misty Rainforest. Wasteland comes down. Two damage pushed across. And Gristlebrand quite capable of just winning this on his own, if not answered. One more swing. So Ben is going to need a Caracas or probably a unlikely to resolve Swords to Plowshares. And Flicker Wisp being cast here, that is not going to do the job. and dazing to prevent the inevitable uh, chump blocking. I mean, it wouldn't be chump blocking with the with the Mother of Runes. So uh, Ben, throwing out a Flicker Wisp could potentially represent the ability to hold off Gristlebrand as the flying creature could be given protection from black, standing in the way, preventing lifelink, but ultimately Matt taking that one down, kind of as expected. So it was a little dicey there. Without seeing his hand, that brainstorm off the Lotus Petal felt very risky, but uh, based off of how quickly that went, I'm assuming he had uh, pretty much everything he needed there and was able to just get the job done. And will now have to hold serve. He'll have to stop Ben from winning. I guess the more accurate way to think about that is he needs to somehow find a way to win despite... Ben's tempo lead here as Ben going first isn't so much about Ben winning as stopping Matt from winning. I mean, death and taxes can win with literal one ones, like three casting cost one one creatures. They'll just beat you down eventually if they can prevent your deck from doing what it does, which is their goal. They've got a lot of different axes that they can attack on. The ability to affect the stack with Thalia, super important. Sanctum Prelate 
stopping you from casting spells of a certain mana cost can be backbreaking as well. It really does demand an answer. If you get a Sanctum Prelate out at three, you can't cast your Cunning Wishes or your Show and Tells, which is a a very dangerous proposition. Luckily, that can't come down until turn three. Matt, double Lotus Petal. Scary for Death and Taxes to see a hand that could have potentially had a turn one Show and Tell. Spirit of the Labyrinth coming down. Off of Sunbaked Canyon. Perhaps enabling a red splash. Perhaps just in there to draw a card. And Matt gonna daze. I'm confused by that. That's interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure why we saw a daze paying, losing a lotus petal rather than the mana drop. Um, intuition giving us some insight into that. There we go. Intuition for triple show and tell. Passing the turn. Ben knows what's coming down the pipe. We've got a wasteland taking out the city of traders. And I don't think he attacked. Well, ponder here. This is not going to draw a card thanks to Spirit of the Labyrinth. But it is good enough to keep. Sunbaked Canyon. Representing some potential card draw. Oh, and that's a Rashadden port. That is, that is an issue. Planes added to Ben's side of the board. And Spirit of the Labyrinth. Really carrying its weight. I mean, the card, you know, we've, we've come to understand just how strong effects like Hull Breacher are. Uh, I, I'm not sure why Spirit of the Labyrinth doesn't see more play. Hull Breacher, Leovold, Narset. I mean, denying your opponent card drawing is just so crucial. And now, Charming Prince. Adding to the clock. More Wasteland, though. This last one, not likely to make a difference one way or the other. Matt's pretty much all in here. Rashad and Port is going to stop Matt from having the necessary mana unless he's going to draw it off the top here. And he's going to Impulse. So that is not card drawing. It is likely he needs to hit a soul land here. He sees Lotus Petal. So he now could draw any land off the top and perhaps have the three mana necessary. He's got a Lotus Petal. There's the Ancient Tomb. Down to two for the show and tell. With a Gristlebrand, that gets Recruiter of the Guard. And that's going to be a wrap. So Recruiter of the Guard is going to be able to grab Flicker Wisp and get Gristlebrand out of there, or possibly... I mean, we'll see what answer he gets. Untap. Upkeep, draw, and let's see how Gristlebrand is cleared. The Flicker Wisp... We see a daze thrown at it. Paying the one. And that will do it. So Flicker Wisp entering the battlefield, removing Gristlebrand from being able to block for that turn as Death and Taxes takes it down. It is eternally a difficult matchup for these show and tell based strategies. That is all for this one, but don't worry, there is a lot more. 
Uh, you can check out our older videos, and we're always putting out new videos from ELD's Time Vault Games in Bellingham, Massachusetts. If you want to help the channel, of course, you can like, subscribe, share, tap that notification bell so you can know uh, the next time our new videos come out. Thanks for watching.